Hello, everybody. Welcome to another video from the RPA Vanguard channel. My name is Andy Menon. Last week, I released a video on how to use robot accounts to run background unattended automations on your UiPath infrastructure. The idea here is to have a slightly different take on how to understand uh, the role that was added to the robot service account uh, as we went through the process of creating it and then finally running a background unattended service automation. So with that, let's get started. What we have here is a typical employee hiring and onboarding scenario. And this is what I meant when I said that I'm going to give this a slightly different take uh, as far as talking about onboarding a robot service account to the UiPath infrastructure. We'll be using the employee hiring scenario as we go through the steps of creating the robot service account uh, in our UiPath automation cloud. Uh, employee hiring and onboarding process starts with a candidate appearing for a job interview. And once that candidate has been interviewed for a job position, uh, the candidate transitions to becoming an employee with a certain job position, right? And that happens at one and two, which is at the company level. Now, once the candidate has signed the offer letter and is hired as an employee of the company, that is not the end of it, right? The employee will be inducted into the business group where they are supposed to be working, right? So that happens at the business group level at position three here. Now, depending on how deep your organization is or how large the organization is, sometimes the groups are divided into smaller teams, right, at level four. Now, for example, in my case, I'm an integrations engineer, but I'm an integrations engineer for the IT group, and the IT group has got many teams under it. For example, we have the front office team, we have the back office team, and then we have the enterprise reporting team, and we also have the uh, IT and help desk team. So I work as an integrations engineer for the back office team, right? So typically the journey of a candidate in the hiring onboarding scenario begins at the company level where they are hired, they become an employee, and then once they become an employee, they join a business group and then they are assigned to a certain team. In the next screen, what we are going to be seeing is how this analogy applies when we want to onboard a counterpart robot employee onto our UiPath infrastructure. And in this slide, what you're looking at is the, the hiring onboarding scenario that we discussed in the previous slide to your left. And on the right is a typical robot employee onboarding scenario, right? So if you compare them side by side, the automation cloud is equivalent to your organization or your company. The orchestrator tenant is equivalent to your business group. And the modern folder in which your robot employee operates will be the team. What we'll be doing next is we're going to go back to our automation cloud and we will create a new robot service account based on this robot employee onboarding scenario. And then as we step through the process, we'll frequently come back to the employee onboarding scenario to better understand why we are creating the robot service account the way it's being created. Right, so we begin the process of onboarding our robot employee and the automation cloud is the organization of the company. Uh, the employee is uh, the robot account and the position that the robot account is being hired for is the automation user. I'm in the automation cloud and remember this is the automation cloud, not the orchestrator and that means that we are hiring our robot at the company level, right? So we go to admin, go to accounts and groups, go to robot accounts, and this is where we'll create 
our robot account. Add robot account. I'm going to just give it a friendly name and the position uh, that this robot is going to be hired is automation users. This is the message that you get as soon as you complete adding the robot service account. And what it is asking us to do is to manage access to this account that's already been created at the automation cloud level. We'll see why that is and how the employee onboarding analogy applies uh, to this scenario. But for now, what we have done is we have created the robot account at the company level or at the automation cloud level. And we have hired a robot employee for the position of automation user in our company. Now let's go to the next step. Okay, just because the employee got hired at the company doesn't mean that the employee gets access to the customer database and the employee can start sending out emails to customers or adding new customer records or updating customer records, right? You just cannot do that as soon as you're hired. There are ways to go, right? So typically in an employee onboarding scenario, once the HR manager gives you the overview of the company, the, all the information about the company, shows you around the office, the next step is to introduce you to the head of your business group, right? Typically that's what happens. Uh, you walk into your uh, business group, the area, the department where your business group is, and then you're introduced to the head of the division, right? The head of that department. And that is something what we are going to be doing here in the automation cloud scenario. If the automation cloud is the company level or the organization level, uh, the orchestrator tenant is the equivalent of a business group, right? So let's say in my case, it's IT, it's finance and IT, right? And in a big company who is a UiPath customer, their automation cloud will have multiple tenants, right? Each for a different business group. Let's say that this employee, this robot employee has been hired to, uh, to perform the job of an automation user just in the IT department, right? So we need to assign the role of allow to be automation user to this robot employee at the orchestrator tenant level. And that's what uh, the message that you saw when you created the robot account was all about, right? So we have to go down to the orchestrator level, the orchestrator tenant level rather, and assign a role that will allow the robot employee to be an automation user, right, for that particular business group. So let's go and do that. I'm back to the automation cloud. And this time we are going to step into the orchestrator and we'll be at the tenant level. Remember, we have now transitioned from the automation cloud and we are going down one level to the tenant and we have to manage the access for our robot employee at the tenant level. So we'll be going to manage access. If you look at the list of all the users or groups here, you will see that Robbie robot is not visible here. And that's because Robbie robot is still not inducted into the business group. So to do that, what we'll be doing is we go to assign roles, robot account, That is Robbie Robot. And we allow Robbie Robot to be an automation user for this tenant. Now, remember, this is our community edition. We have only one tenant, but in the real world scenario, that might be multiple tenants, right? But let us assume that this default tenant is the IT department, right? So I've added allow to be automation user. And then I say next, and I'm going to skip all the defaults and I'm going to say assign. And now Robbie robot is visible at this tenant level, 
right? And therefore, what we have done here is we have transitioned or onboarded our robot employee from being hired at the company level to inducting that robot employee to a particular business group. Now, this is not the end all, right? Just because you have got access to the business group still does not mean that you can start sending out emails to your customers, right? The next step is to be transitioned down to your team, right? So going back to our employee onboarding process, your department head has now walked you around the department and introduced you to all the coworkers and most specifically your team manager, right? The manager you're going to report to, right? And now the team manager has to sort of take charge of you and then assign you your job responsibilities, right? Basically, okay, if I got hired, they say, Andy, welcome aboard. Uh, this is where you'll be sitting. And here's your laptop. Here is your login. And I'm going to create, uh, you know, give you access to some applications. And then you can start working on your first project, right? The equivalent of that when onboarding a robot employee is to give access to that robot account to a particular folder, right? And that's what we'll be doing next. So at the beginning of the onboarding process on the first day, uh, you start assigning responsibilities to this employee and uh, you typically start with one place. And then as the responsibilities of the employee keep growing, then the employee's privileges and access levels keep growing, right? In this scenario of onboarding the robot, we'll keep it simple in that we will give the robot employee access to, let's say the back office folder. I'm gonna create the modern folder just to have more clarity on what we saw in that scratch pad. So tenant folders, and I'm gonna add a folder and I'm gonna call it back office. Okay, so we have the back office team folder created. Observe that you only have the folder administrator, right? And as a last step, we have to now assign Robbie Robot to this folder so that Robbie Robot can start working as an automation user for our team, right? So we go to assign account group and we click on R, there's Robbie Robot. And the position Robbie Robot has been hired for is automation user. So we assign Robbie Robot your automation user permission. And now you can see that Robbie Robot has been assigned to the back office team. Similarly, if people can borrow Robbie Robot uh, to work across other teams, then Robbie Robot will be assigned as automation user uh, to the other folders that are listed here. So I hope that you find this discussion uh, useful. And if you go back and watch uh, the video on robot service accounts uh, that I posted last week, you will see these steps being followed there to create the robot service account. And I'm also hoping that you take this knowledge and extend it to the other roles uh, that are available in the UiPath Orchestrator. And you'll find this helpful when you onboard either a robot account or a real human employee to your UiPath infrastructure. If you found this video useful, please do like and subscribe to my channel. I'll truly appreciate it. Thank you, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.